right, guys. Thanks so much for coming out. This talk is going to be in, uh, in English, so you need some time to put your, uh, your headsets on. Go ahead and, and do that. I'm excited to see so many of you and talk about something that I'm super passionate about, something that I do uh, a lot of research on, and that is the role of social media in elections and politics. And when we, we think about this phenomenon, I mean, it's a big question to talk about in 15 minutes, right? So what we tend to do as political communication scientists is we break it down into bits that we can manage, right? And the first is information. How do we get information from social media, and how does the way that we consume political news affect how we vote, how we participate in politics? The second is communication, and this has to do with how we talk with one another, our friends, our family, maybe strangers we meet on the internet, about politics. And the third is participation. How does social media change the ways that we participate in democracy? And these three things are interlinked. And um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk a bit about what's going on on the cutting edge of research in each of these three uh, fields. fields. Okay, the first thing is uh, sort of set the stage. What actually can we do on social media? How can we uh, generate content? And the first is by simply posting, right? Posting a status, posting a picture, it could be a news article, it could be uh, an opinion we have about politics, that's one thing. There's another way, which is commenting, right? We can react to news through commenting, but we can also do less uh, intensive forms of engagement, such as simply liking and maybe putting an angry emoji to things we see that we don't like. And then the last one, this is my favorite, these are the lurkers. These are people who actually don't engage in posting but they're still there, and they're still reading content as it comes on social media. And all of these forms of engagement, all of these activities, create a massive amount of data. I mean, so much data, our human brains aren't able to cope. We don't know how to deal with it. So when we're trying to study this, we have to break it down, as I said before. So looking at first, information. How does social media change the ways that we consume news? And why is this important? Well, there's a lot of reasons why it's important. But the first, I think the most important, is that we know from decades of political science research that those who know more about politics are more likely to vote. So political knowledge increases voting, and people get informed through the media. The media is the primary way that we get information about politics. And it's important to remember that while social media are a revolutionary type of technology, they're not the first time that we've had a media revolution, right? The newspaper, radio, television, the internet, these have all massively changed the ways that we consume news and how we understand ourselves and our national community. And social media is, it's revolutionary, but it's just the latest chain in that, uh, the latest step in that evolutionary chain. 